Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is uh, on inverse proportion and it's uh, practice questions. Alright, so if you want, what you can do is pause the video, uh, try the question, and then restart the video and I'll walk through the question. And we have two questions that we're going to be working on in this video. Alright, so here we have a word problem uh, on a certain construction site on average. Four workers. Four workers can complete a particular job in 10 days. All right? So these two are connected, the four workers in the 10 days. Assuming the same rate of getting the job done, how many workers would complete the job? So we're trying to find how many workers. All right? So this is, let's just call this workers two, right? Would complete the job in eight days. All right? So this is our time two, let's say. So this is the piece we're looking for. This is our question mark. I always like to put that on the top. And I'm going to call workers two x. Okay, that's our unknown. And remembering when we're working with inverse proportion, the ratios have to be equal and each ratio has the same units. That piece is really important. And again, when you're working with a question, you stop and ask yourself, um, is it inverse or direct proportion? And does one part increase as the other decreases? All right. And we know if the job is finished in eight days, we must have more workers. All right. So this is an inverse question. All right. So we want our how many workers here? So we want our x, and that's the x of the second piece, right? And we put it over the four workers, because this is our workers section. So put it over the four workers. Because that's what we're trying to solve for, is the workers. Now, in the second um, ratio here, these four workers need to be connected to the days that are up here. All right, so the four workers are connected to the 10 days. So then the 10 days must go in the numerator, all right? So these two are connected. And the x is connected with the number of days of the unknown, okay? The unknown. So the eight days goes down here. So again, these four workers, inverse relationship, but they're connected with the 10 days, and the x is connected with the 8 days. And notice here, it's workers over workers, days over days. Now all we have to do is solve for x. So we multiply on this side by four workers. Okay, And we multiply on this side by the four workers. Notice here the four workers will cancel because four workers divided by four workers is one. So that's gone. Now we get our unknown. Okay, so the unknown number of workers is 10 days times the four workers divided by eight days. Now we can see here that we have four divided by eight. They're both divisible by four. So I'm just going to cross this out and make that a one cross this out and make that a 2. The days and the days cancel, because days divided by days is 1. So now we have 10 divided by 2 workers. So x equals 5 workers. And that would be the answer. Okay. So second question, and again, it's a word problem. You can pause the video, 
try the question, and then I'll walk through the video. Okay, so here we have Ohm's Law. Voltage equals current times resistance. And it says here that it states that resistance is inversely proportional to current in an electrical circuit. Well, let's just check and see if that makes sense. So here we have E equals I times R. Notice here that if we divided on this side by current, which is I, divide on this side by current, which is I, we'd end up with R equals E over I. So we can see here that there is an inverse relationship between current and resistance. If you, if you increase your resistance, you will be decreasing your current. Okay? And actually, that's a, maybe a bad way to say it. If we had, for example, a larger current, let's talk about it that way. If we had a larger current, that would change this equation, make this smaller, all right? And as a result, or a result, our resistance would be smaller. So there is an inverse relationship. So let's take a look at what we have here. If the current is 1.2 amps, so this is basically our current one, 1.2 amps, when the resistance is 250 ohms. So this then is our R1, okay? What would be the new resistance? So we're looking for R2, that's a question mark. If the current decreased to 0 0.5 amps, so this is I2, all right? So we're looking for resistance 2, so we can set this up as resistance 2 over R1 equals, and that would be I1 over I2, right? So here the units would be the same, they'd be ohms. Here the units would be the same, they'd be current. And there's an inverse relationship. The R2 and the I2 are inverse here, and the R1 and the I1. So then the, we can plug in our numbers. So R2 is our question mark. That's the thing we don't know right now. R1 is the 250 ohms. I1 is, where did I1 go? 1.2 amps and I2 0 0.5 amps and again remembering the units on this side are the same it's ohms over ohms the units on this ratio are the same amps over amps and there's this inverse relationship this is connected to this R2 is connected to the 0 0.5 amps so now, I'm just going to rewrite this, R2 over the 250 ohms equals 1.2 amps was 0 0.5 amps. We want R2, so we multiply by the 250 ohms here, multiply by the 250 ohms here. These two cancel, and we end up with 1.2 times 250 divided by 0.5 equals 600. So we end up with 600 ohms. All right? Okay. So that uh, video has been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a fabulous day. Take care.